Hello friends. Welcome to Pathology Riddles. Today we'll be discussing the most basic topic of pathology that is cell injury. Before we dive into the topic, I request you to please subscribe the channel if you like our videos and also press the bell icon so that you don't miss new notifications regarding the future videos that we put up. In today's video, we'll mainly focus on the causes of cell injury and the mechanisms of cell injury. So let's start. Now let's look at a brief overview of how our cells respond to stress. Every single cell in our body has a particular function to perform and its structure to maintain. While doing its work, it maintains a steady state of equilibrium called as homeostasis. Sometimes the workload on the cells increase. Example in strenuous exercise. Then the cell is under stress. So it tries to make some changes which is called as cell adaptation so that it can work optimally even under stress. So, in case of exercise, the muscle tries to hypertrophy, increase in size and increase its capacity to work. But sometimes, the cells cannot deal with the stress. Then, the cell undergoes injury. This is one way in which the cell gets injured. The other way is when, there is, when the cell is exposed to injurious stimuli directly. If the injurious stimuli is of small quantity or if the cell is exposed for a short duration, then there is mild injury to the cell. If the cell can repair itself and come back to its steady state, then it is called as reversible injury. If the injurious stimuli has caused severe injury or the cell has been exposed for long duration, then the cell can undergo irreversible injury that is it cannot come back to its steady state then the cell has to undergo cell death either by apoptosis or by necrosis so if a cell is in stress it tries to adapt if it can't adapt then it is injured if the injury is mild it tries to reverse it so it is reversible cell injury if it is of severe variety, then it will go into irreversible cell injury and cell death by necrosis or apoptosis. The first cause of cell injury is hypoxia. What do you mean by hypoxia? There is decreased oxygen supply to the cell. When does this happen? It happens in a condition called as ischemia. Ischemia means there is decreased blood supply to the organ, tissue or cells. It happens in a condition called as atherosclerosis. In atherosclerosis, the cholesterol gets deposited in the walls of the arteries which decreases the lumen or narrows the lumen. As a result, the blood flow reduces and there is less blood flowing to that particular organ which is affected. As a result, the cell suffers because it is not receiving enough oxygen. Okay, the second cause of hypoxia is cardiorespiratory failure. Since due to diseases of the heart and lungs, enough oxygen is not reaching the cells. So there is decreased oxygenation. Thirdly, anemia or carbon monoxide poisoning can cause hypoxia. In this, mainly the hemoglobin is affected. In anemia, we know that there is decrease in hemoglobin concentration. In carbon monoxide poisoning, we know that hemoglobin has more affinity for carbon monoxide than oxygen. So when there is poisoning with carbon monoxide, there will be reduced oxygen carried by the hemoglobin. So less reaches the cells and as a result, the cell undergoes hypoxia. I hope you have understood this. Hypoxia is caused due to ischemia that is decreased blood flow, cardiorespiratory failure that is decreased oxygenation and anemia or carbon monoxide poisoning because of decreased oxygen carrying capacity of blood.
The next cause of cell injury is by physical agents. So which are these physical agents? It could be extreme heat like burns, extreme cold like frostbite. Then sudden atmospheric pressure changes can lead to cell injury. X-rays, gamma rays can cause injury due to radiations. Electric shock by home appliances can be a cause for cell injury and mechanical trauma by sharp instruments which could be at home in the workplace or anywhere that you travel. So these are the causes of cell injury by physical agents. The next cause of cell injury is by chemical agents. High concentrations of salt and glucose can cause cell injury by affecting the electrolyte balance. High concentration of oxygen can be toxic. Insecticides, recreational drugs like alcohol, air pollutants, different concentration of therapeutic drugs and small quantities of arsenic and cyanide can also cause injury by chemical agents. The next cause for cell injury is infectious agents. You all know that we are dealing with COVID-19 pandemic, which is cell injury by viruses. Rickettsia, fungi, tapeworms, parasites and bacteria are also microorganisms which cause injury to the cell. And these come under injury due to infectious agents. The next type of injury is by immunological reactions. That is, whenever an antigen enters our body, the body's defense system is stimulated to produce antibodies. These antigens bind to antibodies to form immune complexes. Immune complexes deposit in the tissues and give rise to cell injury. And antibodies can also be formed against body's own antigens called as endogenous self-antigens. This can cause autoimmune diseases like SLE. Genetic derangements are also a cause of cell injury. For example, an extra chromosome can lead to Down syndrome. A single base pair substitution can lead to sickle cell anemia. Genetic defects can cause a deficiency of functional proteins. And some individuals are more prone to certain injurious agents due to DNA polymorphisms. Do not worry if you don't understand these terms, but know that whenever there are some genetic derangements, they can be injurious to the cells. You will know about all these terms related to genetics in the immunology chapter, which we will discuss later. Finally, we have nutritional imbalances as the cause of cell injury. This could be due to inadequate nutrition intake like vitamin deficiencies or self-induced starvation like anorexia nervosa or excess fatty food which leads to increased cholesterol and atherosclerosis which can lead to myocardial infarction or gangrene. Then even the composition of a diet can cause injury and disease. Now we have finished enumerating the causes of cell injury. So let's have a quick recap of each of them. First of all, hypoxia, decreased oxygen supply to the cell. Secondly, physical agents like extreme heat or extreme cold can result in cell injury. Chemical agents like insecticides can lead to cell injury. Fourth one, infectious agents. These could be viruses, bacteria, parasites. Then we have immunological reactions which could be antigen-antibody complex deposition or autoimmunity, gene derangements like Down syndrome, genetic defects, and finally, the nutritional imbalances, which could be anorexia nervosa or deficiency of certain nutrition causing diseases. So now we will go to mechanisms of cell injury. Major mechanisms of cell injury are ATP depletion, mitochondrial damage, calcium influx into the cell, 
free radical accumulation membrane permeability defects and damage to dna and proteins today we'll discuss all the five except for free radical accumulation which is a major topic by itself so we'll discuss in the next episode so let's start with the first mechanism of cell injury that is atp depletion so what causes reduction in atp you know that most of the atp comes from oxidative phosphorylation and atp is required for most of the synthetic pathways and the metabolic processes that occur in our body this oxidative phosphorylation happens in the mitochondria so if there is mitochondrial damage there will be decreased oxidative phosphorylation and decreased atp secondly to perform oxidative phosphorylation most important is oxygen and nutrition are also required so if there is nutritional imbalance decreased nutrition will lead to decreased oxidative phosphorylation and decreased atp decreased oxygen will also do the same even exposure to toxins can result in decreased oxidative phosphorylation and decreased atp what happens when atp reduces anaerobic glycolysis starts this anaerobic glycolysis occurs in the absence of oxygen and it utilizes the stored form of glucose that is glycogen so glycogen reduces in the body and the end product is lactic acid lactic acid starts increasing which will increase the ph of the interior of the cell and when the ph of the interior of the cell will be increased there will be clumping of the nuclear chromatin secondly there is sodium pump the sodium pump is present on the cell membrane and it is dependent on atp for its function that is to take in potassium inside the cell and sodium outside the cell if it fails sodium will move into the cell and potassium will move out of the cell so if there is more sodium inside the cell it will draw in water as well and when this pump fails even calcium will try to be influxed into the cell so there will be more of calcium inside the cell now this calcium is also present in few organelles like endoplasmic reticulum and the mitochondria uh, organelle so they will also release the calcium into the cell so the intracellular calcium will also increase and because of increased water and sodium the cell swells the endoplasmic reticulum swells and the ribosomes which are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum they start getting detached so the reduced atp will affect the sodium pump when there is sodium pump failure the cell will swell endoplasmic reticulum will swell ribosomes will become detached the acidic ph increases inside the cell and there will be clumping of nuclear chromatin so next mechanism of cell injury is mitochondrial damage mitochondria can be damaged because of decreased oxygen toxins radiation increased calcium entry into the cell increased reactive oxygen species production and gene mutations involving the mitochondria all these can lead to mitochondrial damage once the mitochondrial mitochondria is damaged what happens is it will form a conductance channel called as mitochondrial permeability transition pore across its membrane when this channel forms this is a high conductance channel when this forms the membrane potential of the mitochondria is lost if the membrane potential is lost oxidative phosphorylation reduces which results in reduced atp then when there is mitochondrial damage it will lead to 
abnormal oxidative phosphorylation if there is abnormal oxidative phosphorylation there will be production of more and more reactive oxygen species which are harmful to all the molecules of the cell then there is opening of mitochondrial outer membrane usually the intermembrane space between the two membranes of the mitochondria have got some pro apoptotic proteins like cytochrome c if these are released because of the opening of the mitochondrial outer membrane they will go and activate apoptosis by the mitochondrial pathway which will lead to cell death by apoptosis so basically if mitochondria is damaged then the pore opens and the membrane potential is lost oxidative phosphorylation reduces atp comes out next there is abnormal oxidative phosphorylation it produces more of reactive oxygen species which is harmful to the lipids glucose and all the structures of the cell and there is opening of the mitochondrial outer membrane which will release pro apoptotic factors which will release in cell death the third mechanism is increase in intracellular calcium usually intracellular calcium is at a bare minimum the calcium which is present inside the cell is usually sequestered in the endoplasmic reticulum and the mitochondria so how does it increase usually when the cell is exposed to toxins it will cause the release of the calcium from the sequestered areas that is endoplasmic reticulum and mitochondria so it will increase inside the cell even decreased blood supply decreased oxygen will cause sodium pump to fail because decrease atp and sodium pump is failed and calcium which is outside the cell moves inside so there is extra cellular calcium moving into the cell as a result intracellular calcium increases both from outside as well as the sequestered becomes free inside the cell once the calcium levels increases inside the cell it will activate cellular enzymes which could be phospholipases phospholipases will break down the phospholipids which are present in our cell membrane proteases it breaks down the proteins in the cell endonucleases it breaks down the nucleus and atp so whatever little atp is there that is also broken down next intracellular calcium increase will open the mitochondrial permeability transition pore again we saw how the opening of mptp or mitochondrial permeability transition pore will decrease the atp next intracellular calcium increase will activate the caspases directly now caspases are enzymes which cause apoptosis of the cell they are the main enzymes involved in apoptotic pathways so if they are directly activated they will result in cell death so if the calcium increases inside the cell the cellular enzymes which cause destruction of the cell are activated it also activates the enzymes which leads to cell death by apoptosis it also opens the pore of the mitochondria which results in decreased atp production so that's how the intracellular calcium causes cell injury so the next mechanism is defects in membrane permeability this occur due to infectious agents physical agents chemical agents as well as biochemical mechanisms like the production of reactive oxygen species it affects the membrane permeability by damaging the membrane by lipid peroxidation next phospholipid synthesis is impaired due to 
reduced oxygen supply and reduced ATP, which is required for the biosynthetic pathways of phospholipid production. So as a result, there is reduced production of phospholipid. It is required for the cell membrane mm, structure. And if that is not produced, there will be more of permeability in the cell membrane. Then whatever cell membrane phospholipid is there, it is broken down. This is because of increased intracellular calcium inside the cell, which will trigger the cellular enzymes, which are uh, phospholipases, and they will break down the phospholipid. Next, the cytoskeletal filaments are the ones which uh, connect the cell membrane to the inside of the cell or the interior of the cell. So whenever there is increased intracellular calcium, what happens is uh, the um, proteases get activated and they will uh, break down the cytoskeletal proteins and as a result there is membrane damage so finally when the membrane permeability increases what will happen all three membranes are affected not just the plasma membrane but also the organellar membrane if plasma membrane gets affected the osmotic balance is lost the water comes inside and the nutrition go outside the ATP production is impaired and we have already seen what happens when ATP is less. Next, mitochondrial membrane is damaged. We know the three mechanisms that occur because of mitochondrial membrane damage. That is the pore opens, the ATP goes out and even the apoptotic proteins are triggered which results in apoptotic cell death. Lastly, lysosomal membrane gets damaged. If this gets damaged, it will release all those lysosomal enzymes which include DNAs, which will break down DNA, RNAs, break down RNA, proteases will break down proteins. And finally, the cell will die due to necrosis. The next mechanism is damage to DNA and proteins. This is caused usually by drugs, radiation and oxidative stress. Usually, the cells will repair the DNA damage or the protein damage. But if the damage is too severe, then apoptosis is initiated and the cell dies. The only mechanism which is not described here is accumulation of oxygen-derived free radicals. This will be described in the next video. So please wait for it and press the bell icon so you get notified when it is published. Also, subscribe to the channel and press the like button if you enjoyed this video and do comment on what are the further topics that you would like me to make a video on. That's all for today. Signing out. Pathology Riddles.